uh, and then the oral maxillofacial surgeons have to cut healthy tissue to reconstruct. Now with stem cells, we could induce them to become a deposite and generate these soft tissue grafts so that surgeons don't have to induce secondary trauma. Uh, we have differentiated dental stem cells into muscle progenitor cells or myoblasts, and uh, I'll spend some time on this in a few slides, that uh, once you can induce these cells to become myoblasts, and then it's possible to uh, potentially heal muscular dystrophy. We have differentiated dental stem cells into pancreatic beta cells that produce insulin. And these insulin producing cells could be a potential cure for diabetes. We have induced dental stem cells to differentiate into neuron like cells or nerve cells. And these cells could be potentially meaningful for spinal cord injuries for neurodegenerative disease such as Parkinson's. Uh, Alzheimer's and, and other neuro, neurodegenerative disease. So this picture is, we are all very familiar with. These are the deciduous teeth uh, and impacted third molar. These are exfoliated deciduous teeth with a little bit of pulp tissue uh, remaining. And, uh, and this is showing a second bicuspid extracted for orthodontic treatment and oftentimes it's a first bicuspid from any of the deciduous teeth and uh, from the uh, adult teeth, permanent teeth. Um, there are stem cells, they can be safely uh, isolated and they can be safely stored. So we'll get into those um, down the road. So the dental stem cells, the first group of slides has to do with the differentiation of dental stem cells into insulin producing cells. So uh, this uh, image will show you what the dental stem cells look like. We still remember the days of, of uh, histology or cell biology, you know, you, you know that these cells look like fibroblasts. So indeed, these dental stem cells under microscope, they look like fibroblasts, but they certainly do not behave as fibroblasts. So what we did they, in this experiment was we isolated single cells, one single cell from the dental pulp uh, uh, cell population. So you pick one single stem cell, then you can expand them from one single cell into hundreds of thousands of cells. So you are looking at four individual clones. So these are from four different patients. So from each patient, you pick a single cell, you expand, you can get hundreds of thousands of cells or even millions of cells. So with manipulation, we differentiate these cells into insulin producing cells. So the cells are now green, becoming green. They are green because we used an insulin antibody with a fluorescent marker, so we now now we know that these dental stem cells have become insulin producing cells. And at the same time, they express PDX1, which is a critical gene that has to be expressed in native pancreatic development. So when we are, uh, uh, when we are in the embryonic development stage, PDX1 is expressed, and then these our pancreatic beta cells start to produce insulin. That's a very uh, critical function. Without that, we'll have diabetes. Uh, now we have millions of cells, all from a single cell that started to produce insulin and to express PDX1. So some of the uh, folks would say, well, now we have these cells. Why don't we start delivering these to patients? We would really like to, but there are several additional steps. If you take these cells, now we have these cells in our lab. If we inject these cells into the very patient who donated these cells, who is a diabetic patient who had a uh, uh, deciduous tooth exfoliating, so the tooth was extracted and sent via express uh, through uh, FedEx or UPS in the United States to our lab. So it got into our lab within 24 hours, and we were able to isolate the dental stem cells and turn these dental stem cells into um, insulin producing cells. Now, some of you would say, well, why, not, why don't we just go ahead and deliver these cells to the patient who has diabetes? Well, there are, uh, there are several other steps, and, and science is not always that simple. So if we inject these cells back into the di diabetic patient, what, uh, uh, what most likely will happen is that these cells, um, if we inject them into the pancreas, and that's a very traumatic procedure, and pancreatic surgery, the surgeons will tell you, it's a very traumatic procedure. And if you inject them sub subcutaneously, right under the skin, say of the arm, of the, of the back, of the body, and that's very, that's the least traumatic. But what would uh, likely to happen is these cells would transform into other cells because they are influenced by their surroundings. 
the stem cells are sometimes like human beings. When you move to a new community, you sort of adapt some of the behavior of the people that are around you. And they will become, probably become fibroblasts. And the other issue is there is insulin deficiency diabetes, and then the, the key is to deliver cells that produce insulin. The other type of diabetes is the autoimmune, so your own T cells and B cells start to attack the, your own pancreatic beta cells. So what we have done is to put these insulin producing cells that are derived from dental stem cells in these micro beads. So the material here is a, uh, it's called alginate. It's a biomaterial. It's safe to be implanted in a uh, patient's body. So there are several reasons to put the insulin producing cells in these micro beads. A, the cells are together and they form their own community and there is a greater likelihood they will, uh, they will continue to produce insulin. And B, in the autoimmune diabetes, they were, the B cells and T cells uh, would not be able to get into contact with the insulin producing cells. Now we have these beads, now we are at a stage to deliver to the uh, diabetic model. This is a uh, zoomed view of the uh, biomaterial. You will see clusters of these uh, insulin producing cells from uh, patients. Um, from patients' dental stem cells. So this is the current treatment of diabetes. So there's the insulin injection, there's an insulin pump. So you, this has to uh, be injected or carried on a daily basis. Um, uh, this is from a uh, Nobel laureate in the 1920s that insulin is a treatment for diabetes, but not a cure. So this goes back to what we said during the beginning of my lecture that current medicine is by and large a treatment, and it's not a cure. So if these uh, stem cells derived from, from the teeth uh, can be safely delivered to patients and continue to produce insulin, and this will be one procedure either injected or implanted, then this will be a cure for diabetes. So if look, we look at the potential impact and, and, and in the field of diabetes in the United States,